So next week is certainly shaping up to be a pretty big week for AEW. This big grand slam of AEW. Four hours of jam-packed shot between Wednesday night's Dynamite show and then the tape version that's going to air Friday night for Rampage. Two hours of Rampage next Friday. Let's not make a habit or pattern out of this. I understand it. And I look at the show this week and it's kind of a felt a little bit like they're just looking forward to next week, which I, I admittedly, I kind of understand. Like, but at some point in time, you can't always do all the gim big gimmicks. You can't always, you know, just try to bump something up, you know, or throw something out there. Like, you've got to, you got to find some level of consistency with your kind of BAU business as usual. And sometimes I feel like AEW is slightly lacking in that. Like this, this rampage was mid. Let's be clear. Certainly better than the SmackDown I watched on Friday night. That's for sure. But it was mid. Not much more than that. And it really felt like they were trying to jam a lot of stuff in. And a lot of it just felt off. Didn't really work. There was one real highlight of the show that I'm going to have to give credit for. And I will talk about that in a moment. Uh, but first, AEW Tag Team Championship, Butcher and the Blade, who I didn't realize I had to look it up. They actually were legitimately the number one ranked contenders to take on the Lucha Brothers, which to me is more of a reflection of why are they the number one contenders? What the fuck have they done? What is significant or important or key about them? Like, that makes no sense. If anything, wouldn't the Bucks still be the number one contenders? Like... I just don't know that their rankings make a whole lot of sense. Like, what have Butcher and the Blade done that is actually noteworthy, relevant, impactful in any way? I'll wait. Still waiting. You get the point. So a pretty weak first title defense, I think, for the Lucha Brothers. And it was just kind of a mid-match. Did the champs really have to just resort to what they did? I'm going to sacrifice my mask in order to win? Like... I felt a little extra and unnecessary and uncalled for based off of the moment and spot and match that you were in. Uh, Lucha Brothers retained, but yeah, it was like, ugh, just kind of there. The Kenny Omega, Mega Brian Danielson video package was pretty good. I'll give that credit. Uh, last week, you know, I got to say, or not last week, excuse me, Wednesday night, you know, for the first time, that I can remember, Kenny Omega came across as a somewhat legit world champion to me. And I like the fact that he's approaching this from a standpoint of, I'm that dude, and you're not just going to come in here and do whatever. Like, that story makes sense. That said, this feels like an awful lot of hype for a match that doesn't mean shit. Now, I made a mistake on Wednesday's Dynamite review because I thought and assumed from a logical standpoint that this match was going to be for the AEW title. It's not. Like, this is the epitome Meltzer match mark bullshit. Not every t championship reign needs to be months and months and months. You have to read the tea leaves here a little bit. You have to understand where you're at. You have to understand, you know, what you're facing and yeah not it so weird good video package you know past couple weeks they've done some good stuff to build up to this match next Wednesday at Arthur Ashe Stadium but personally I think it's ridiculous that this one's not for the AEW title that's just me uh, Anna J versus the bunny Anna J looks great this match was eh and why do we keep having to involve Penelope Ford and anything physical that could lead to potential future in-ring action for her. Could we please not ever do that again? That would be super duper. And, and, you know, I understand maybe there's a temptation here with Rampage that it's your B show, and it is. We all know it is. It's a way for you to utilize more of your roster, more of your talent. But it is an hour of relative primetime television every Friday night. You should be a little more selective in terms of the talent you're featuring. It shouldn't just be a dumping ground from everybody you don't feature on Dynamite. It doesn't need to be that. Like, just be a little more strategic in how we do things. 
Will Hobbs got a nice little video package. I don't understand why everybody's so obsessed with Hook. Like, what's a big deal? Somebody's going to have to fill me in, fill in the old man in the comments, if you will. But made Will Hobbs seem like a legit threat to CM Punk next Friday. Hyped up that match well. It's got me hooked for that one. Um, if I wanted to watch shitty WWE segments, I would watch WWE shitty segments. What I don't need are those shitty WWE segments on AEW. And that is the only way to say anything about this Matt Hardy segment where, oh my God, it's an Orange Cassidy lookalike. Of course, it's some fat neck beard that you pull in and then you start cutting his hair and shaving some of his head. You clip the ponytail, Michael Hayes style. Um, and then Orange Cassidy comes out for the save. I still think it's astounding that if we're talking about rankings, I Butcher and the Blade were the number one ranked tag team yet. They get a title shot here on this show. For some reason, for some ungodly known reason, Orange Cassidy is technically number one in the rankings, but he's sitting there fucking feuding with Matt Hardy talking about some hair versus hair type of bullshit. Yeah. No. J just no. This is bad and everybody knows it. Now, the good thing I will say about a show like Rampage is the fact that it is only an hour, unlike next week, so there's going to be two, but that's that's match heavier. Like, I get that. At least it's only an hour. If you can get one pretty good thing in an hour, you can still feel like it was worth your time to watch. And that one good thing this week was the Britt Baker and Ruby Soho in-ring segment. Now, typically, I think it's a little lazy when you go with all the insider stuff and behind the state scenes crap. Like, a lot of people can sound really good at a promo doing that because it's kind of lazy, let's admit it. That's the easy shit. But this one, I gotta say, really, really worked. For all the crap I gave Ruby the last time she was in this spot and I thought she looked like a clown and a fool, she was really, really good here, really on point. I can still hear a little bit of nervousness in her voice on the mic, but... Some of the best work I've seen from her, for sure. And it at least did its job to get me more interested in their title match next week. That's all it was designed to do. The back and forth between the ladies was pretty good. And it really came across well. I'd assume most others probably feel that way, too. Because it, it worked. Like, this was easily, beyond question, the best of the night. If this is more of what you're going to see out of Soho in the future, then perhaps I was wrong with her. It remains to be seen. Um, I still think she's kind of sloppy, botchy, and incredibly overrated in the ring. And I don't know how good of a match her and Britt Baker are really going to have come next week, but we will see. Time will tell. But this segment has me curious to at least see what they're doing. It would be nice if we could have seen this segment on Dynamite. And you ask me, why would I say that? Well, because more fans would have seen this. That's a trade-off sometimes. Like, with the viewership discrepancy and disparity that you have between the Wednesday night edition and the Friday night edition of AEW television shows, you know, you put some of this good stuff on Rampage, fewer people are naturally going to see it. That's the only bad thing about it, but... At least it made Rampage watchable, because otherwise this show was not even mid. Like, that segment made this a mid-show. Otherwise, this felt like a kind of phoned-in, half-ass one. Your main event, the title versus car match, it's Fuego Del Sol versus Miro. Like, Miro wins, which I don't think was really a surprise to anybody, but we're not going to destroy the car? No, it probably is Fuego Del Sol's actual car. And he's like, I can't afford another one, so we can't do anything to it. Like, just, Maybe he'll do something with it next week, I don't know. But as far as right now, like, yeah, that was kind of a deflating and disappointing end. Um, the big moment, of course, at the very, very end is Sammy Guevara coming out to help his friend and make the save, kind of teasing a run at the TNT title and taking on Miro. And the crowd was kind of interested in that. But... Why was Miro scared of Sammy Guevara? Like, just, that, that didn't really work for me. You could probably hear my energy level is not great. And it might be because I'm recording this at around 2.30 in the morning. That's certainly when you've been up since 6 a.m. and you're now 2.30 in the morning. Like, 
You're running on fumes, or at least I am. Uh, but my tone and my energy level is matching the tone and energy level of Rampage. Felt like a kind of phoned in show where at the same time they're kind of trying to cram a lot of crap in and crammed too much crap in. It, it just didn't connect. It might be the worst episode of Rampage in my estimation that they've had so far. And no matter how much that bothers somebody, every show can't be the exact same greatness. Something has to have been the worst show. You've only had a few of them, so the odds are larger that it would be this one. But yeah, if I'm thinking about the past few weeks compared to now, like this was the worst of the Rampage shows that I've seen so far. 